precisely at the beginning of this comment here. Given that I've been burned already with a website, well, more importantly, the American people have been burned by a website that has been dysfunctional, what we've also been doing is creating a whole other set of tracks, making sure that people can apply by phone effectively, making sure that people can apply in person effectively. So what I'm confident about is that anybody who wants to buy health insurance through the marketplace, they are going to be able to buy it. All right. I've been burned already with a website. Juan Williams, Fox News political analyst, Mary Catherine Hammett at large, hotair.com, and a Fox News contributor as well. Hello to both of you. Hello. Um, slip of the tongue, Mary Catherine, or well, uh, I know, is I internalizing think it's this? Or, I, I mean, does, does he re really feel like, you know, I got a bunch of people working for me who screwed this up? Well, I, I think he feels burned. I think this is reflective a little bit of the fact that he maybe puts his uh, political fortunes and the fact that he is burned ahead of uh, the other concerns in this interview. And I think this was the moment where he could have showed ultimate empathy, right? He's been dishonest about the fact that people could keep their plans. Now people are losing them. As, as late as September 26, five days before the exchanges opens, he was saying people in the individual market would keep their plans. That's not the case. He could have been empathetic here, and it, he came uh, not very close to that. So he, in he fact, referring he, he, to himself as the victim instead yeah, of them. He didn't go far enough for you, clearly, right? No. I mean, Juan, did I, don't, he, I don't think people who lost their plans are going to feel like that was a real empathetic answer. I, I think you're, exa I think you're precisely right about that. I apologize for the interruption. Juan, what did you think of that? I think he was contrite. In fact, I think he was overly contrite. And there's no slip of the tongue there. I think that he's exactly right that he got burned. And then when he said, more importantly, the American people got burned, he was all absolutely right on both counts. But do I think that he feels personally aggrieved that the people in charge of the technology failed him and have ex you know exposed him to this kind of embarrassment yeah i mean i think he's hey, a Juan, human being critical yeah, yeah. critical question here right. did he see the website before it went public on october 1st you know i don't know the answer to that but I doubt no it. one does you, you right. doubt Maybe it should have. i mean that's ridiculous to think that he would not have looked at the website beforehand and well, if he that, did though? he would because he would have seen the problems and they still went forward with it anyway knowing that it was going to be a it was going to be a big bag of mess. Bill, well, that's, like, that's like you saying to me, Juan, did you know that the camera was working before you sat down this morning? I don't, I don't check the cameras. I don't know. I don't think the president is involved in checking the technology. You don't no, think well, they would have rolled a computer in the Oval Office and said, fire this thing up and tell me how he, it works? I just, this I mean, is I just his think legacy. That, that's just basic. Go ahead, Mary Kay. This is his legacy. He was supposed to serve the American people with this product, and he was not overseeing it in the proper way. If I give my baby a bath and I make the water too hot and the baby gets burned, I don't get to go around talking about how I got burned. You know why? Because I was in charge of the water. Yeah, but I'm saying in this case, I don't think he's the chief technology officer. I think he's the president of the United States. But, but more, more I, to Mary what, Catherine's point, he, I mean, for her, clearly he did not go far enough. But, but yeah, you were and, okay and, with the statement because he's going to do another interview, Juan. I don't yeah. know if it's today or in a week or a month from now when he's going to get more questions about this. And how is well, he going to explain he should get on a Monday of, of this week what we said was you could keep it if it hasn't changed since the laws passed. What he said on Monday, if the insurance company changes it, then what we're saying is they've got to change it to a higher standard. That was right. four days ago. Yeah, and I Blame think... Blame the, the insurance companies. The second one is absolutely right. I mean, what you had was substandard policies, Bill, that were being pumped out by insurance companies. And now you say, oh, here are some basic standards. Like you can get an ambulance to get to the hospital and the insurance company they will pay for it. If you have a pre-existing condition, they can't kick you off. All of these things, very basic. And I think that most Americans say, well, thank God someone is now in imposing consumer protections against these insurance companies. But somehow, I think this conversation gets distorted because the president did mislead people as to saying nobody, period. So he would distorted lose a the conversation then? <laughs> no, I think that's what happens is there's so many critics, so many people willing to pounce right no, no, now. What, what the, position the president is, can't do anything. No, to be yeah. clear, what the position of the administration is, is that your policy wasn't good enough. And right. we're going to yeah. tell you and what's good is, wait, and what's on, not, let me, Mary Catherine. Let me point out that in some of these cases, they're loading up the policies with these essential health benefits, many of which you don't need if you're the person buying the policy. You're getting pediatric dental if you don't have kids, that kind of thing. And it's meant to jack up your prices so that they can subsidize other people. That was not how they sold the bill. People feel betrayed, and they should. It was not, it was not some passive event. Obama was in charge of it. He 
allowed his administration to write regulations that eviscerated the grandfathering clause so that none of these policies that people were happy with could not survive. Okay, all right, Mary I don't Catherine, think anybody Juan, felt Juan, betrayed. Juan, I, Juan, I, I think there are people who didn't have insurance. Adam, but but your yeah. camera works very well there in Washington. Juan. <laughs> thank you. He's and president you of the friend. cameras. Terrific. <laughs> See you later. See you guys. All right. Well, it was a very special night for evangelist Billy Graham, the all-star gala celebrating his major milestone.